Okay. Hi everyone. So I've been, um, noticing that a lot of people who are interested in this breakout or who have taken this breakout have mentioned really wanting to get the film look without switching from digital. And although I do talk about that a little bit when I kind of match my, um, my digital shots to the film that I shot in the same session, I feel like I didn't really focus on that a lot. So, um, I just wanted to talk about it a little bit here and also do an edit from scratch instead of using one of my, um, presets, because I feel like my presets are kind of funny. I mean, they work really well for me because I, I know where I shoot those specific film stocks. And so I kind of have used them to, um, to, you know, um, match the film in those same lighting conditions. So it's, um, it's a little bit tricky, I guess, to, um, see what I've been doing straight from the digital file when I'm using a preset, right? <laughs> so, um, since I made those presets myself, I kind of want to go through basically how I did that, but also talk a little bit about what makes an image look like film. So, um, I did one session, I needed something fast for a loop or something. So I did, um, I did it on digital and it was supposed to be me, um, dropping pedals on my daughter and getting the pedals falling. And it was really kind of hard to see, but I, um, I kind of did it on continuous shutter and it was tricky to do because I was dropping the pedals at the same time that I was shooting. So that's why I kind of, I was practically shooting blind. Now, before I did any on digital, I shot a couple shots on film. So this one is the film, is one of the two film shots that I got. The, the second film shot I got was actually out of focus on her face. It was still cute, but this one I think is just perfect. Um, I think I had a hundred shots on digital and this is what they look like raw. I didn't really make sure that my um, white balance was right. And um, I think this is fine exposure for a digital image. This is probably what I would do on purpose. So it's a perfectly fine shot. I cut off her elbows and things like that, which I don't really care about. Um, but, you know, that was again because I was just shooting blind and on continuous shutter. So none of the shots turned out super awesome, but I edited them and edited them and posted them before I got my film back. And it looks totally different. I didn't make it look at all like film. So, um, I just wanted to, let me see if I can reset that. Yeah. It looks pretty much exactly the same. I, it looks like I upped exposure a tiny bit and that is about it for this shot. So this is how it came. This is, um, Lomography 100, I think, or 400 is the film stock for that. So I'm going to try to kind of match these two together. But before I do that, I'm just going to try to kind of get this film look. So let's examine kind of what looks different about this film shot um, and this digital shot. Actually, let's see. How did I do that? I'm going to go back to the shot that I edited. So this is what I edited and posted for this um for this little session before I saw the film. So it's not the worst thing, but it doesn't really look exactly like the film. And I'll, I'll kind of explain why I'm going to add that to my tag. So now I can just look up breakout film. What? Oh, breakout edit. Sorry. All right, I'm not going very fast here. There we go. All right, so now we've got this is the out of um sorry, straight out of camera shot. This is what my first edit was before I saw the film, and this is what the actual film looked like. Now, depending on what I was shooting, this could have looked a little bit more like this, but um, I was shooting this hopefully to make it, or I was editing this hopefully to make it look like film. 
So here's a couple of the differences that I saw. The, um, the tonal range in film is less dramatic than it is on digital edits. For example, um, see the highlights here are not very different from the darker tones here. So it's like there's less contrast. Now, sometimes I do want more contrast in my images, but in this case, there isn't going to be a lot of contrast anyway, because I'm completely in the shade in the shot. So this isn't a time when I should be adding a ton of contrast because if we're trying to make our images look like film, we want them to look, um, as close to what it actually looked like in person, basically, um, when we're finished editing. So if you're in the shade, you're not going to have a huge dynamic range. You're not going to have a huge amount of contrast between the light and the darkness. So this dark grass here is not going to be hugely different from her lighter skin. Um, as far as where the light is falling. Now in my image, as you can see, I make it look like the green grass is just much darker than, um, her highlights on her skin here. And that just is kind of a byproduct of, of digital where it just, it, um, records every amount of information. See, it looks like that when it's raw, that the, you know, the highlights are much brighter than these dark greens. So if I really wanted it to make it look like film, then I would need to kind of even that out a little bit. So I'm going to kind of knowing what I already had done. And I'm pretty sure I did this edit by hand. Let me see. Actually, if I used a preset, I was in a hurry. So I might have used a preset. Oh, I said synchronized setting. So I have no idea. I know I have no idea what I did. I think I edited this by hand. I don't think I used any of my presets. Um, so I probably just kind of messed around with stuff. Yeah. I barely hardly did anything here and I tried to keep it as clean as possible. And that was probably my answer for trying to make it look like film is just keep it as clean as possible and see what happens when you get the actual film. And it's really not, if I, uh, let's see, I up the exposure a little bit and I take the contrast down instead of up. Whoa. Now I've gone too far with my exposure. There we go. Now that doesn't look so completely different from the film and the tones are a little bit different, but that's just lomography, right? All right. So, but knowing what I want to have film look like, I'm just going to take this raw image. So the first thing I'm going to do is just see how, well, I can put it in um, shade and yeah, that looks pretty good for white balance because I was in the shade. So that makes sense. Or you can even just, I can try auto. I can actually put it, you know, I can adjust it, but I actually think that shade did really well. I liked what it did with the pink. See, there's a little bit of green in her skin, but it kind of was that way in the digital shot. And it would be in real life anyway, because she's underneath a tree and surrounded by green things. So I'm going to up my exposure a little bit because on film things kind of look light and airy unless I tell them to specifically not do that. I'm also going to, well, I want to fix the crop, but I want to be able to see these greens. So I'm just not going to pretend this is a better crop. <laughs> All right. So the next thing I would do is so usually on my film pictures, if I want to make them look a little bit more like my digitals that have lots of contrast, I will dehaze, like I would raise the dehaze kind of a thing. Whoa, that looks horrible. But in this case, I'm going to lower it a little bit so that it gives it a little bit more of that, um, you know, less, less contrast. And I'm going to up my shadows a little bit. Now I'm starting to feel like that's a little too airy for me, but I'm going to change a few little things here just on my tone curve, bring down just the blacks, but keep the mid tones up. Let's see, Let's see what that does. Yeah, that's pretty good, but I'm going to bring down my highlights and I'm actually going to bring the highlights down just all the way from the side here. I was doing it a lot to kind of show you what that looks like, but I'm going to do it like that. That's looking a little more. Now it also looks really perfect. And, um, 
that's just digital. That's how a digital looks. <laughs> it looks really perfect. And that's awesome if that's what you're going for. But if you want the film look, that kind of um, dreamy look, then we're going to need a little bit of grain. So how come I can't find the grain? Here it is. I'm just going to turn it up to like 18, 20. Let's do that. And then I'm going to keep the roughness pretty fine. Raise the size. Let's look really close and see what that's doing. I'm turning it way up so that I can see it come down. And there are a lot of presets that have different film grains that you can just throw on. Um, like I have a couple sets that have like 35 millimeter grain or 120 grain or whatever, but even just that at about 25 gives it a little bit of texture. Um, but not so much that it looks like I would want to turn up the luminance and get rid of that grain. It doesn't look like a mistake. It just looks kind of nostalgic. And when you zoom back out, you can hardly see it at all. So there's that. Um, if I'm not super in love with, or let's say like Lomography seems to kind of have a little yellow in its, um, in its highlights. I'm going to try putting a little bit of yellow. That's going to be way too much for sure. We're going to bring it down just in my highlights. And in fact, I'm going to actually just kind of warm up the highlights a little and then bring it over toward the yellow a tiny bit. Um, about there. Let's see. And then turn it off and on and see. Yeah, see that changes it quite, quite a bit, but it warms it up a little too much for me. I'm going to bring it down a tiny bit to only like 7%. I just did like the same exact thing I was already. Okay, like that. And then check it. Yeah, that's a little better, but I'm also going to, again, come up here now and raise the exposure a little bit. Um, I might even, no, I don't think I'll raise the highlights, but I might actually a little bit and bring up the blacks a little that I'm going to bring down the whites so that our whites don't go a little crazy. All right. So as you can see, it kind of is mostly here in the histogram over, over to the right, but it's not even close to being blown. So this is again, a more like a uh, light and airy film look. And if I properly exposed on film, this is kind of what it would be anyway, because like I said, there's not a lot of dynamic range here. The other thing is this green is still looking really deep. That just doesn't often happen on film. And sometimes I'll even bring the greens down in film, um, to make it a little less, um, I mean, they just, they just turn really bright. So in this case, I'm going to raise the luminance of the greens. Yeah, that helps a little bit there. Um, I don't think I need to change the saturation hue. I might turn a little more yellow, but no, I want the green to look actually green. And it's not really doing a ton with that. So I'm actually going to bring up the shadows a little more. Let's see if that does it. Yeah. Okay. So see how just now the greens don't look quite as, um, they don't look quite as dark as they used to there. It's not as huge of a change between the highlights on our skin and the darkness here. Um, last thing I'm going to do is just kind of, this is also from memory. I just feel like that turquoise was a little brighter. So I'm going to bring up the aqua a little bit on that blanket, but I'm feeling like there is hardly any contrast left in this image at all. So I'm just going to add a little bit of texture and see if that helps. I want to have some contrast, right? Um, and I don't love using actual contrast. I like using dehaze. Maybe I'll turn that up a little bit. Um, and then I'm feeling like that pink is a little bit too saturated her lips. So I'm going to turn down the saturation on the red just a tiny bit. 
and up the luminance a little bit here. Let's see. Oh, I forgot that that might do something to the petals. Let's see. Actually, no, it was perfect. Okay, so actually, I think that's looking pretty good. This looks like a film image to me. I mean, I can tell it's still digital. I could really bring up the grain even more or make the size of the grain a little bit bigger just to add that little film look. But this is the amount of contrast that I feel like I would get in a film image. Um, let me turn up the roughness a little because this would be 35 millimeter film. Let's see what this does. Yeah. <laughs> if you come up here, now we're shooting, um, now we're shooting color plus. <laughs> so every film stock has its own little grain that's pretty distinctive. So depending on what kind of film you like to shoot or that you like the look of, this little grain here would change. Um, but you know, I take a little bit of grain out of my film images anyway. So, but I think this looks pretty good. So now that we, now that I've done this kind of from memory or kind of what I think a film image would look like, I'm just going to put this up next to my <clears throat> actual film. Okay. So I did pretty good. It looks like the green, at least in Lomography is a little bit more blue than this. So if I were trying to match this exactly, I would go to the greens and I would change the hue to be a little bit more. Oops. That's the aqua. Might've done it though. A little bit more towards the blue side see there now the film now the green matches like exactly and I feel like this aqua looks a little bit too green as well so I'm gonna move that a little towards the blue and I may come back to the luminance and bring that aqua down a little bit now I feel like it's pretty close um, so, you know, there's a difference between just getting a film look and trying to match it exactly to the shots. Now her dress doesn't look exactly right, but actually I can't really see those little orangey parts and I can't see her lips in this picture. So I can't really tell if I've got her skin exactly right, but the, or her lips exactly right, but the skin looks pretty close and her hair looks pretty close. So these are the things that I would look for. <laughs> Definitely. I would look for the skin and the hair and it looks like I would need a touch more yellow to get those both right so I would just turn up the yellow a little bit or even come up to the um, temperature and turn that up but now just putting two little clicks of yellow I think that looks I mean to me that looks almost identical so I would leave it just like that and then I would make this a preset in fact I'm going to and if you want to know how to make presets this is how you do it um, I'm going to add create preset and I'm going to call it now put it in my to do cami film presets and I'll call it Lomography 400 and I'm actually going to call it Lomography 400 shade because I know that Lomography looks different in the sun and if I want to use this at some point to match some other lomography, then I am going to want one that's made for the shade. But even when I just did this um, from scratch, when um, when I wasn't really looking specifically at lomography, I got basically that film look right. So there are some basic things that you can do to try to make it look like that before you even look at a film image. I want to look really quick again at this image that I thought I had done more like film before and it's not crazy far off I think I just should have kind of brought the exposure up a little bit and when I've seen this image on my feed I always do think it looks a little bit too dark and I'm not really a light and airy shooter like I, I like contrast in my images but I still feel like this image on the right the one that I've edited to look like film and also the film actual film image they do look more like what it actually looked like in real life. 
And Lomography, I think, is a really colorful stock as well. It makes those greens really bright. It keeps the skin tone kind of um, warm and, and orangey rather than um, putting a bunch of cyan in it like, like Fuji would. So I feel like this is, um, this is a pretty good edit no matter what. So I don't know if I can, but I, I'll try to add in that Lomography um, preset I just made. See if I can throw it up in there for you somewhere on the breakout. But um, that's basically how I make my presets is I'm looking at a film image and then I try to add things in. I'm always dealing with the tone curve. I'm always looking at, oh, I usually play with vibrance and saturation a little bit, but I more use these, um, the HSL panel and I'll add a little bit of grain and I will look at the contrast and really try to match it in that way. So if you start looking at film images and you notice what you like about them, because every film shooter will also shoot film differently. So if you look at what it is about just the film images that you like, if you like the light and airy look, if you like less contrast, if you like the grain, whatever it is, that's how you do it. That's how you're making it look like the film is just to come in here and start adding that kind of stuff into your shots. So I hope that helps. Oh, there was already some sharpening in there, but I think it's a good thing to put in. So anyway, I hope that helps with um, kind of how to get that film look. And um, to me, this is, I mean, so, so much better than this first edit that I did. Um, and even then, I feel like this one blows everything out of the water, even though it's... Um, maybe a little bit different than I would have ever edited on digital. I just love that authentic look of it. And I love Lomography and I chose it specifically for this shot. So this is the colors I was going for. Also, I got better petal bokeh on film than I did on any of my continuous shutter digital shots, which blows me away. I really didn't think I would. So it's too bad I didn't get this one in time, <laughs> but oh well, it worked out. All right. So I hope that helps. Um, ask me any questions and I'll talk more about this, um, in the Q and a, but I'm happy to help in any other way that I can to get that kind of, Hey, I turned these off. I thought I turned off notifications. Oh, well. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.